We're building foam scenery on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I recently received some pro foam cutting tools from Hotwire Foam Factory, and I've been excited about trying these out and sharing them with you. Well, at the same time, I've also for some time needed a photo diorama that I could take outside to photograph locomotives and rolling stock in natural sunlight. Well, this seemed like a perfect combination. So today I'm going to begin the process of building that photo diorama out of foam. And I'm going to demonstrate for you the use of some great tools from Hotwire Foam Factory. I'm also going to share with you how you can get your hands on some of these very same tools as we go along the way. Have you built scenery with foam before? Have you used Hotwire Foam Cutting Tools? Or have you used other processes to form and shape your foam? Tell me about your experiences in the comment section down below. Now, let's start building this diorama and try these great tools from Hotwire Foam Factory out and see how they work. To build my photo diorama, I'm working with some scraps of 2-inch extruded foam insulation board that I had on hand. I played around with various configurations and drew out some ideas on the foam itself for track placement as well as the creek bed that I'm planning as part of the diorama. When I found the configuration that I liked, I glued the foam pieces together using Great Stuff Expanding Foam. I used the Great Stuff because I wanted to experiment with cutting it with a hot wire foam cutting tool, but there are other adhesives on the market that can be used and will work with hot wire cutting tools as well. I'll tell you about a source for some of those adhesives in just a moment. I applied the Great Stuff sparingly used some skewers to hold the foam in position and weighed the stack of foam down while it cured as the expansion of the foam will do crazy things to the foam board as it sets up. When the great stuff had cured, I removed the weight and the skewers. Then I was ready to start carving and shaping the foam into the hillside that I wanted. To shape the foam for my diorama, I used some new tools that I recently received from Hotwire Foam Factory. Kits from Hotwire Foam Factory come with an instructional DVD, and I got one of the three tool pro kits that came with the multi setting power unit, the sculpting tool, a free hand router, and a three inch hot knife. Each tool has its own on off switch, and the kit also comes with several replacement wires for each tool. Before I demonstrate the tools, let me tell you that you can purchase tools like this individually or as kits as well as the foam safe and cuttable adhesive that I mentioned earlier, all from Hotwire Foam Factory. I have an affiliate link to Hotwire Foam Factory in the description down below this video where you can purchase items from their full line of products. I hope you'll check that out. The multi-power source for the Hotwire tools has four different power settings. I started by experimenting with the Hotwire tools on a large scrap of white styrofoam packing material. I started with the second lowest power setting. When I turned the power switch on the tool on, it heated up within 10 seconds. And after turning the tool off, it cooled down in between 10 and 30 seconds, depending on the tool and the power setting. Obviously, the higher the power setting, the faster the tool cuts through the foam. As with any tool, the more you use these tools, the more skilled you're going to become at getting the effect that you want. This is why I think a little practice on some scrap foam is a really good idea. After some practice, I was ready to start shaping my diorama. I have a rock casting that I wanted to include in the diorama, so I first marked out where the rock will go with a sharpie so I could carve around it. Then I started carving the basic shape of the hill with the sculpting tool. I suggest you carve in increments until you get the general shape that is what you're looking for. Carve the layers until they become a consistent hill with smooth transitions between the foam layers. As the hill was getting close to my desired shape, I used the freehand router tool to carve out the stream bed. Take your time in making cuts like this, 
as pulling the hot wire too fast through the foam will change the shape of the wire as it pulls through the foam and thus change the shape of your stream bed. As I said before, practice will make you more skilled with these tools. Some of my carving was a little rough, so I smoothed out the stream bed and the hill contours with a rasp and some coarse sandpaper. I cleaned up the mess with my shop vac. I installed the rock casting with some hot glue. I then installed the roadbed for my track, cork roadbed from Midwest Products. This is not how I would normally adhere cork on a layout, but for the sake of this diorama, I simply glued it to the foam with a thin layer of hot glue. I trimmed the ends of the roadbed flush with the edges of the foam, and I then sanded the cork to remove the rough edges from the beveled sides and also to make sure that the surface was smooth and level. I filled any voids around the rock or between the layers of foam with my own ground goop type mixture. In this case, it is made up simply of celluclay, a recycled paper material similar to paper mache, mixed with latex paint and a little bit of white glue. You can accomplish this same purpose using sculpt mold mixed with a little craft paint but I had this mixture on hand left from a previous project. I applied the mixture with an artist's spatula and worked it down as smooth as possible. When the celluclay mixture was dry, I sanded the rough spots with 180 grit sandpaper until it was smooth. Next, it was time to paint my rock casting. I used craft paints for this. I started with a light gray color diluted with a bit of water to allow it to flow smoothly into all the cracks and crevices of the rock. I made sure to look at the rock from every possible angle and in various levels of light to be sure that absolutely no spots of white were still showing. While the gray paint on my rock was drying, I touched up areas of the diorama where the blue was showing through with some tan paint. This paint didn't match the tan in my ground goop mixture, but ultimately it will be covered up with real dirt and other scenery material, so I wasn't too concerned about the color difference. When the gray on my rocks was dry to the touch, I applied a reddish tan color to my rocks to add some color variation. I diluted this paint significantly with water to make a wash, then brushed over the rock casting with more water until just a hint of the color was left on the rock surfaces. When that layer of paint was dry to the touch, I used a wash of India ink and alcohol to give some definition to the shadowy areas of the rock. This wash will darken the rock casting as it dries, but not nearly as much as it looks when it's fresh and wet. As the alcohol begins to evaporate, I use the edge of a paper towel to soak up any spots where the ink has pooled more than I wanted. When finished, this process leaves me with a pretty convincingly realistic looking rock face. Finally, when all of the other paint on the rock had completely dried, I dry brushed just a little bit of sun highlights onto the very edges of the rock with some white paint. You can see other detailed videos about how I cast, install, and paint rocks in the videos of a playlist that are in the card in the upper right hand corner over your screen right now. And here's a look at my finished and completely dry rock face. I cut a section of flex track for the diorama. I used Pico Code 80 because I had it on hand, but a section of Code 55 rail would have been preferable. I adhered the track with latex caulk. I prefer to use a gray color as it blends well with the gray blend ballast that I usually use, but honestly this will be covered with ballast so color is probably not all that important. I smoothed the caulk with a scrap of cardboard. I wanted the caulk to be thick enough to squeeze up between the bottoms of the ties and hold the track in place, but not so thick as to squeeze up more than half the thickness of the ties and thus to interfere with the application of ballast later. I pinned the track in place with push pins until the caulk had dried. Push pins like these are perfect for in-scale track as the heads are almost exactly the same width as the insides of the rails so it holds the track exactly where it is pinned. Here's a tip about using caulking. If you use a small amount from a tube of caulk and plan to use more within a few days, 
Push a 3 inch drywall screw into the end of the tip of the caulking tube. This will plug the hole in the tube and will keep the caulk fresh for several days. When ready to use again, simply pull the screw out, squeeze out a bit of the caulking into a trash can to make sure that you have a good fresh bit of caulk coming out of the tube and you should be ready to go. And that completes the basic form of this photo diorama. I'll come back in a second installment and add scenery and details to complete this project and I'll be ready to go outside and take some photographs. Well, I have to say, I loved working with these new tools from Hotwire Foam Factory, and I'm really pleased with how this photo diorama is starting to come together. In the second installment in this series, we'll come back and weather that track, ballast it, we'll be adding scenery to the entire diorama, including doing some water features uh, in that creek next to the track, so you'll want to be sure and watch for the second half of this series. I want to remind you one more time, if you're interested in some hot wire cutting tools or some of that great foam adhesive that works well with the hot wire cutting tools, well, be sure and check out my affiliate link with Hot Wire Foam Factory in the description down below. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more scenery making videos that I think you'll enjoy as well. I also hope you'll check out the description down below before you leave, where you'll find not only that link to Hotwire Foam Factory, but also links to my Amazon page and my Amazon Pick of the Week, as well as my Patreon page and places where you can connect with me on social media. Well, I hope you'll join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?